in our previous episodes we have gone through the significance of dimensions and facts in data warehousing today we are taking a step further to dive into the different types of dimensions let's unravel this concept and discover how they bring data to life in unique and powerful ways with that foundation set it's time to zoom in to explore each one of them different types of dimensions are conformed dimensions degenerate dimensions slowly changing dimensions rapidly changing dimensions junk dimensions shrunken dimensions and inferred dimensions let's begin with the first one conformed dimensions are like the markings on a ruler no matter where or by whom the ruler is used whether it's in the classroom a workshop or a science lab the measurements remain consistent similarly conformed dimensions have the same definitions attributes and meanings across different databases and tables so that everyone in an organization can make consistent and accurate data analysis in the context of data analytics consider a retail company that operates both online and brick and mortar stores this company might have separate fact tables for online sales and in store sales a conformed dimension would be the product dimension that is used by both fact tables regardless of whether the data analyst is examining online or in store tables the product dimension will have a consistent set of attributes such as product id product name category and price what are the critical properties of conformed dimensions consistency reusability integrity and interoperability how do they help maintain data integrity by providing a single version of truth how about interoperability they allow for comparisons and aggregations across different business areas making enterprise wide reporting possible next one degenerate dimensions imagine you are at a bookstore where every book has a unique barcode this barcode is not part of any series or collection it just serves to identify each book individually at the checkout you don't need extra information like the genre or author to process the sale just this unique identifier similarly a degenerate dimension is a dimension key in the fact table that does not have its own corresponding dimension table because it is a single attribute typically an identifier like an order number or transaction id it is used to uniquely identify a record within the fact table itself for example in a sales fact table you may have a sales order id which is unique to each sale transaction it does not need a separate dimension table because the order id itself doesn't have descriptive attributes that need to be analyzed it's simply a unique identifier for each transaction like a unique barcode on a book these unique identifiers help you pinpoint a specific transaction within a vast collection of data what are the properties of degenerate dimensions uniqueness simplicity identification and space saving slowly changing dimensions given the significance of slowly changing dimensions I have made a dedicated video for that. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend watching it to fully grasp how they maintain historical accuracy within our data. Rapidly changing dimensions. These are like the display of a stock market ticker. Just as the ticker constantly updates with new stock prices throughout the trading day, similarly, rapidly changing dimensions in a data warehouse are those that have frequent or large numbers of changes to their data in an organizational context this can pose a challenge for data analysts who need to ensure that their analysis remain up to date and accurate amid constant changes take for example a retail company with a dynamic pricing strategy that changes prices based on real time demand competitor pricing or inventory levels whether the analyst is evaluating online promotions or in store discount events the price dimension requires frequent updates to reflect the latest pricing data 
which includes attributes like current price, discount amount, and sale flag. Critical properties of rapidly changing dimensions volatility, complexity, timeliness, and adaptability. Next up, junk dimensions. Think of a junk storage box in your home, a place where various small, seemingly random items are kept so they don't clutter up other storage spaces. Similarly, a junk dimension is a collection of random, low volume, discrete attributes such as flags, indicators, or binary values that are not part of the main dimensions in a data warehouse. These attributes are grouped together into a single dimension to simplify the data model and reduce the number of columns in fact tables. For instance, in a sales database, you might have various binary attributes like ease promotion, whether the sale was made on promotion, ease holiday, whether the sale occurred on a holiday, or ease weekend, whether the sale happened over the weekend. Instead of having separate columns for each of these attributes in every fact table, they can be consolidated into a single junk dimension. This way, the fact table can reference this collection with one key, streamlining the structure. Coming to its properties, simplicity, efficiency, clarity, and manageability are the key ones. Next one, role-playing dimensions. Imagine an actor in a theater troupe who plays multiple roles in a play, wearing different costumes to portray different characters. The actor is the same, but the context of their appearance changes their role within the story. In the data warehousing world, a role-playing dimension is a single dimension that is used for different purposes within the same database or business intelligence environment. It gets its name because it can role-play different parts in relation to different fact tables. For instance, a date dimension could be used as an order date, a shipping date, and a receiving date. Each of these dates may reference the same date dimension table, but play different roles depending on the context within the sales process. Its key properties are versatility, context-specific, efficiency, and complexity management. Last one, inferred dimensions. Imagine you are at a party and meet someone new, but you only get their first name and a few interests. You don't have their full profile yet, where they work, their last name or other details. In your contact list, you create a placeholder for this person intending to fill in the complete information when you learn more about them. In the world of data warehousing, inferred dimensions work similarly. When a transaction occurs, and not all the dimension information is available at the moment, a placeholder record is created in the dimension table with the available information and the rest of the attributes are filled in or updated later when the complete details are available. Inferred dimensions are a practical solution for dealing with incomplete data, ensuring that the data warehousing processes can continue smoothly while waiting for full data availability. This is typically done during the ETL process when a fact requires a dimension key, but the complete dimension record is not yet available. For example, in a sales data warehouse, if a sale is made, but the complete information about the customer is not yet entered into the system. Perhaps the customer is new or data entry is delayed. An inferred member with available details like a customer ID or name is created in the customer dimension. This allows the fact table to be updated with a foreign key to the customer dimension without delaying data processing. Shrunken dimensions. Consider a greatest hits music album from a well-known artist. This album does not include every song the artist has ever produced, but rather a selection of the most popular or significant tracks that represent their work over the years. It's a smaller, more focused collection that still provides a comprehensive impression of the artist's music. Similarly, a shrunken dimension is a dimension that has been intentionally reduced in size by selectively including only certain attributes from a larger dimension. 
This is often done to support a specific focused business process or to improve performance in a particular context. For instance, if a company has a large customer dimension that includes all customer data, a shrunken customer dimension might be created for a specific regional sale. This shrunken dimension would only include customers from that region and relevant attributes rather than the entire customer base. The key properties of shrunken dimensions are reduced size, focused analysis, performance improvement, maintained relationships. This wraps up our today's discussion on the different types of dimensions. We'll see you in the next one with different types of facts.